I don't know about you, but I am so ready to wrap up winter. Let's just get to it. Hi, my name is Sarah, and if this is your first time viewing, my channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. I did a winter module plans sewing video a few months back, and I had originally intended to do this whole series of videos where I was going to show you everything that I made and how I would style it, but I have since decided to condense all of that into this one video because mentally I am completely over winter even though there is a ton of snow outside and I'm ready to move on to spring. So today we're going to be wrapping up my winter module sewing. I will go through each make and tell you the details of the sewing process. And while I'm talking, I will be inserting some footage and clips of me wearing the garments with other things in my wardrobe. And you're going to want to watch to the very end because I will have a slideshow of all of the pieces worn together so you can see how the module interacts with each other. And I'm just going to set that to some music. So let's just get started. So starting with tops. The first top I want to talk about is the Sew Over It Pussy Bow Blouse. This was in my plans video and I made it out of the fabric that I intended to use, which is this Dashwood Studio Rayon. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the fabric. I made a size 6, which is my normal Sew Over It size, and I was worried about it being too tight in the hips, and so I did add one and a half inches to the circumference at the hips. In retrospect, I didn't really need to do that. I shortened the sleeves by 2 inches and I did a half inch full bicep adjustment. I made version 1 which has the tie higher up on the neck and there's another version that the tie comes down lower on the v-neck but I wanted the high neck version. I really like this particular view because you can actually tie it up so that it's close to the neck or you can actually have a looser tie that's closer down to the v. I just feel like it's a little bit more versatile. Now I did make a slight alteration to this pattern and honestly it was due to laziness. The sleeves are supposed to have a thin narrow cuff at the end and originally I had intended to finish the sleeves with elastic but what I didn't realize is that the sleeves are actually fairly close fitting. There's not really enough fabric to do gathering at the wrist so I just ended up simply turning up the hem and stitching it. Now since I got my body typing done and have discovered that those little extra details really help, I wish that I would have taken the time to just do the cuff like the pattern states, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with it, it's just I wish I had made that little detail instead of skipping it. Now the fit on this is reasonably good, but there are a couple of issues. First of all, the shoulder is slightly too long, it wants to hang a little bit off of my shoulder, and I think that's pretty common for me with Sew Over It. I probably need to start doing a narrow shoulder adjustment. And the top is also just slightly too tight across the shoulders and the back. I need to do a broad back adjustment, but I did not do that on this one. And the other thing that's kind of weird about this top is that the neck opening is a little bit narrow, and it's actually slightly difficult to get it on and off. Once it's on, it feels fine. It doesn't feel tight or anything, but just when you're putting it on and taking it off, it is a little bit difficult to like, I don't know, get my head through the opening and get my shoulders in. It's just a little bit of a squeeze to get it on. But for the most part, I am really satisfied with this top and I do like the tie neck. I would consider making this again, although I do have some other patterns in my stash for bow tie blouses that I might try just for something different. The first time that I sewed with Dashwood Studio Rayon, I had a really hard time with the fabric. It frayed on me and there were poles and things and I was really dissatisfied with the way that it sewed. But this time around, I used a small, sharp Microtex needle and I didn't have any problems at all with the sewing. I think that it went really well. So I absolutely am thrilled with the way that this top turned out. I think that it's one of the showstoppers of the module. Now for my second top, I don't have a ton to say about this. The pattern is the Victory Patterns Francis Top. This is a tried and true pattern for me. I have made many, many versions. And the fabric that I used is the Premium Merino from the fabric store in New Zealand. And I used one meter of fabric and the colorway is called Cloud. It's a very light gray. As per usual, I cut out a size zero at the shoulders and the chest, and then I graded up to a size two at the waist and carried that down to the hem. I did shorten the sleeves because I have short arms, and this pattern is super, super easy and simple to put together. I actually made an identical version of this in a black merino jersey that I shared in my previous makes video. And the only thing that I did that was slightly different on this one is that instead of getting out my cover stitch, I used Maraflex thread to do the hems just because I was feeling a little bit lazy and didn't want to get out my cover stitch. Just like with the previous version, I did put a tag in the back so that I could distinguish from the back and the front. I know that it's very popular right now for people to put labels in their clothing, but I actually don't like doing it because I just don't like the feeling of having something touching the back of my neck. So I usually don't put in tags. The only time that I do it is when I have a hard time figuring out what is the back and what is the front. 
So yeah, not a whole lot to say about this one. I do wish that this was white. When I bought the color, I actually thought I was getting a white, but it actually turned out to be this light gray. So it's not quite as versatile in my wardrobe as white would be, but I do think that it's a really useful neutral turtleneck. It's super warm because the merino jersey is just such a really nice quality, and I've been wearing it quite a bit since I finished it. So the third top that I made is a little bit different. I deviated from my plans, and it was actually kind of an impulse make. So originally I had planned to make another Francis turtleneck, but I'd already made the two, this one and then the black one, and I just didn't feel like I needed another turtleneck. I was kind of craving something different. So I ended up going to Tilly and the Buttons and I purchased the Agnes top. Now this top has been around for a really long time and I've never really been tempted to buy the pattern because I have some tried and true fitted t-shirt patterns already, but I decided to get this one because it has these interesting ruching details. You can do ruching at the shoulder or you can do some ruching in the center front here. And I just thought that that was just a little bit different, a little bit extra, that it was worth going ahead and buying the pattern. So because this was my first time sewing up this pattern, I wanted to try it out of some remnants. I didn't want to cut into something really precious right away. And so I had made a dress out of this fabric. It was my January Minerva brand ambassador project. And I had just enough of this fabric left over to squeak out this t-shirt. So I was really happy that I was able to use up all of the meterage that was sent to me. And I got two beautiful garments out of it. This is a cotton spandex jersey. It's very stretchy, it's nice and hefty, and I really love the color. Now for the sizing on this, I chose to make a size two at the shoulders and the chest, and then I graded up to a size three at the waist and carried that down to the hem. However, I do think that the t-shirt at the bottom is a little bit curvier than my actual body. I probably should have graded back to the size two at the hip, but because this is a fairly long t-shirt and I'm always gonna wear it tucked in, it doesn't really matter. But just for future reference, I think that I would actually probably cut this off a little bit shorter because I do find it to be a bit long. And I think probably if I just trimmed it from the bottom that that would make it narrower for me and that would probably fit just fine and that's probably what I'll do next time. I did also shorten the sleeves by three inches and I finished off the cuffs and the hem with a one inch hem. Now I do have one little nitpick with this pattern. So when I was sitting down to sew this pattern, it's a t-shirt and I'll be honest, I am not very good at following instructions, especially for things that I've made before, garment, types of garments that I've made before. I know how a t-shirt goes together. The only thing that I really needed the instructions for was to figure out how to do the elastic in this sleeve. And in the actual instructions, it does not tell you how far to stretch your elastic when you're sewing it down. And I couldn't find that information anywhere. And so I had to just kind of guess where the elastic was supposed to stop. So I did mention that in my finished make pictures on Instagram and the company Tilly and the Buttons actually left me a comment and said that those instructions were with like the fabric suggestions or something. It was on another page that I would not have thought to look at. And so, I mean, it's great that the instructions are actually in the pattern, but I just found it a little bit weird that the elastic instructions weren't with the actual sewing instructions because this pattern in particular is meant for a beginner. And I would just think it would be most useful to have the steps and all of the instructions in the order that you would actually be following them and not having to flip back and forth between pages. And for me, since I don't print out my instructions, you know, scrolling through the PDF on my computer, trying to figure out where this instruction is. So I just thought that was a little bit weird, but but technically the instructions are complete. They are there, but you might have to go hunting for them. It's just a little bit of a warning there. Now I'm really happy with how this top turned out. The reason why I never tried this pattern before is because I wasn't that sure how I would feel about this ruched sleeve. I kind of worry that it would make me look a little bit like a football player, but I actually don't think that it makes me look like that at all. I really love the way that it looks. The only thing that I'm not 100% thrilled with is the neckline. So it's a little bit of a lower scoop neckline and that's just a personal preference thing. I just don't really like having large expanses of my chest on display. I prefer to be a little bit more covered. So I think that when I make this again, I'll probably mash it up with the Francis and do like the crew neck tee, just like the one that I'm wearing right now and have that really beautiful puffy dramatic sleeve with the higher neckline. I think that I would be more comfortable that way. And I might even try other versions where maybe I do like a mock neck or something, but I do really, really love the way that this sleeve turned out. I wouldn't rule out making another scoop neck version for summer or something possibly, but it's just not my favorite neckline. Other than that, I really love this t-shirt and I'm excited to add this new piece to my wardrobe. I think it's gonna get a lot of wear. Now let's chat about the bottoms. This is where I really started to deviate from my plans and I'll tell you a little bit more in a minute why. So this pattern is the Paradise Patterns Protea Pants, and I made a size four at the waist and I graded to a size zero at the hip. 
I made the flat front version. There's a pleated front or a flat front and I chose to do the flat front. And this fabric is a four ounce denim that I got from Joann's a few years back. Now originally I had wanted to sew these pants out of a rayon twill fabric that I had on order from Minerva, but because of some postal snafus, it took an extremely long time to get that package. I did eventually get it, but it took a couple of months and I was in the process of sewing my module and I was really making a lot of progress and I didn't want to have to stop in the middle and wait for fabric to arrive. So I just switched around some of my plans a little bit so that I could keep going while I was still waiting for that fabric. And then when the package finally did arrive, I was basically done with the module. Module, and so I did not end up using the fabrics that I had ordered. Now for pattern changes on this, um, I already said that I made the waist larger. I also shortened the legs two inches and I graded up to a size four at the, oh, I've been holding it backwards the whole time. I graded up to a size four at the crotch level. It's just gave me a little bit more room in my thighs. And then I did also do a three inch hem. I did a blind hem on my machine. And from what I can remember, I don't think the pattern tells you to make the hem that quite that deep. And so that does mean that I ended up shortening the legs a little bit more even than what I had originally did on the pattern. So this was a relatively straightforward sew. There was one spot in the instructions that I got tripped up on and it was kind of one of those weird like placement issues. Like I don't think the steps are numbered and then the way that they're laid out on the page, it's not super clear to me whether you're supposed to go, you know, like left to right and then, you know, down and then left to right. Or if you're supposed to go like down, you know, like step here, step here, step here, step here. And so when I was making the zipper, I actually got a little bit confused and did things out of order because I wasn't following the layout on the page. I feel like that easily could have been eliminated by paying a little bit more attention to how the, the steps are laid out, but also just by numbering them, that would have been really helpful. Other than that, the pattern was really straightforward and simple to follow. I do also really like that there's only one pattern piece for the front, and whether you do the pleated view or the non-pleated view is that you simply tape together the pleated part and then you cut out the flat front. I like that you don't have to print out a whole separate front for the other view. I just think that that's a really good way to do it and it saves paper. So I really like the way that these pants turned out. I think next time I would add just a tiny bit more length to the back crotch. But other than that, I think that it fit is really good and I love the wide leg look. I think that it's gonna get a lot of use because it's very versatile. You can wear it in the winter time or you can wear it in the summer. This is a nice, fairly light fabric and so it's really comfortable to wear. The 100% cotton is breathable. And this dark denim shade is just so versatile and I think that it will go with a ton of things in my wardrobe. I would also like to try the pattern with the pleats and I was thinking maybe my next version might be out of a white linen for summer. I think that that could be really beautiful. So far in this winter module, we've been zipping along and everything has been going great, but I did run into some hiccups with this. And so this is the I am sunshine jeans pattern. This was not on my original plans list. I think I was originally gonna make a pair of jeans, but because I made those pants out of a denim fabric, I didn't want two denim pants, so I decided to switch it up and make this out of this black corduroy. I made a size 38, and I made the view that was the tapered view. There's also a baggy view, and originally I had planned to do the baggy view, I'm really glad I did the tapered view and we'll get to that in just a second. I did grade up at the crotch level to make more room for my thighs, but that turned out to be a mistake. I really didn't need to do that. I also shortened the legs, but only by one inch. So that tells me that these pants are meant to be cropped because I am four foot nine and I have extremely short legs. It is very common for me to have to shorten pants by as much as eight inches. So the fact that I only had to shorten them one inch was really suspicious to me. I did end up trimming a little bit more off of the bottom at the end. So I think in the end, I shortened it by about two and a half inches. But just so you are aware, I do think that it is important to note that I think this is supposed to be a cropped pant pattern. Now the fabric that I used is a slight stretch corduroy that I got from Joann Fabrics. I say slight because although it does have, I think one person spandex, it's really not very stretchy. I also used a contrasting color top stitching thread that I got from Wawak, which was also a mistake that I will talk about in just a second. Now the instructions for this I thought were really good. I did not have any issues with it. The problems that I had were kind of all of my own making. So from what I can remember, I think I was in between sizes on this pattern and I ended up sizing up. 
And so I made the size 38 instead of the size 36. And as a result, the pants are too big for me. They're especially too big in the waist. Like there's a lot of gapping. And if I don't wear a belt, the pants just want to slide right down my body. Now I have fixed this exact problem in the past by opening up the back waistband and putting in some elastic, but I'm not actually going to do that on this pair because I don't like them enough to want to fix them. So the issues that I had with the top stitching is that this is a fairly wide whale corduroy and it just meant that when I was trying to top stitch, the thread just kind of wants to sink in between those whales and it makes it look really uneven. I wish that I had just chosen a matching top stitching thread because I feel like this top stitching is just not up to my normal standards and I don't think that it looks very good. The primary problem with these pants though is the fit and some of it is like i said i think i chose a size that was slightly too big but also i just think that the style of the pant is meant to be a looser fit it's supposed to be baggy and as i have been learning i don't think baggy pants do me any favors i'm already so short anything that makes me look wider is just going to make me look even shorter so i'm really just not that crazy about the fit of these and also the style i don't think that it really suits me and so i'm not going to get rid of these right away because they are comfortable if we're talking about just kind of lounging around the house on the weekends I could wear them but they're not a pant that I feel like I want to wear to work or I want to wear out it's just not the most successful make that I've ever done so I definitely will not be revisiting this pattern this was on my original make 9 and it's actually what prompted me to do a make 9 redo because I realized that a lot of those projects that were on my first make 9 I just wasn't really that interested in making anymore and I didn't want to force myself to make things that I would then end up with something like this where I'm like you know what I really don't like this so it was a good learning experience and like I said I do think that I'll get somewhere out of it on the weekends and such but it's not my favorite now let's chat about my layering piece so this was another one that I did what I said I was going to do in my plans and I made the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cup of Cardi in this moraine double cashmere that I got from Serge Fabrics. Now this is my second version of this cardigan. The first one was made out of a sweatshirting fabric and I talked about that in my previous makes video. So because this one was the second one, it went together nice and easy. I made the size six in the cropped version and you have an option to do a tapered hem or a regular hem. And in my first version, I did the tapered hem, which just means it's a little bit more cinched at the waist. And this version, which is the regular one, is not quite as short. So it's a little bit looser fitting at the bottom. I do really like the way that this fits. I feel like it's very comfortable. I did size down one size from my measurements. And then I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but I splurged on some glitter buttons from Stylemaker Fabrics. I wanted some really fun, beautiful buttons to add to this. And it did end up being very subtle, but I can see the glitter and I just think that it's really pretty. Now, like I said, this is a really easy cardigan to make. And because it was the second time around, I didn't have any issues with it. The thing about this layering piece that makes me a little bit sad is actually the fabric. So I kind of knew this going in just by feeling it and knowing the fabric content. I think it's like a, a rayon based sweater knit. The fabric was just super, super soft and I was concerned that it wasn't going to wear very well. Now this was one of the first pieces that I made in my module. It might've been the first piece and I actually finished it back in mid January and I've been wearing it pretty frequently ever since. And I have to say that the fabric isn't wearing very well. Like it's already pretty pilly and I can just tell that it's gonna age really poorly and I don't think it's gonna last very long in my wardrobe, which is unfortunate because it's a white cardigan. It's really practical. I find that it goes with so many things. So that's really the only downside of this is that I just don't think that it's gonna be very long lasting. And although the fabric is nice, I'm not gonna say that it's a bad quality. It's just sort of the nature of that type of fabric. I don't think that I would purchase it again because I just don't think that it's gonna last very long in my wardrobe. So in my original plans, I was going to make a dress, but because of the Minerva snafu and my fabric didn't get here on time, I scrapped those plans and I used the fabric to make the jeans. And so I wasn't gonna do a one piece to this module at all. But at the very last minute, I decided, you know what, I do wanna make one more piece. I'm gonna make a pair of overalls. So the pattern that I chose is the True Bias Riley. I purchased it in her Black Friday sale last year. And the fabric that I used is this Mind the Maker denim. It's a black denim non-stretch, and it's been in my stash for quite a while. I got it from DNH Fabrics, but it is also currently available from Minerva. Also, because I thought it would be really fun, I have quite a large quilting cotton stash, and so for the pocketing, I just used this really fun um, Pac-Man fabric for the pockets. Now, spoiler alert, I really love how this turned out, and it was actually fairly fun to sew, 
but oh my goodness, it was a lot of work and it took me quite a few days to finish it. Now for sizing, I chose the size zero. My hip measurements would put me in between a size two and a four, but looking at the finished garment measurements, I went with a size zero because I was really focused after making those sunshine jeans that I didn't want the finished result to be too baggy. So I thought it would be pretty safe with a, just a little bit of ease in the hip. So that's why I went with a size zero and I'm really happy with that decision. So I shortened the legs by three and a half inches and then for just the thigh portion only, I graded up to a size two because I did flat pattern measurements measurements and the original size zero was going to be the exact same circumference as my actual thigh and I thought that that might be a little bit too tight and uncomfortable so I graded up to a size two just in that area to give me some more space. Now, like I said, I really did enjoy the sewing of this, but it was a lot of switching back and forth between top stitching thread and normal thread. I only have one machine that I use on a regular basis. I mean, I have a serger, but I only have one sewing machine. So I can't do the thing where you switch back and forth between different machines. I had to keep constantly switching out my thread and also my needles because I used a size 90 needle for the construction. And then I used a size 100 top stitching needle for all of the top stitching. This top stitching thread is from Wawak. Several years back, I bought cones in a variety of different colors and I've just been using them ever since. If you guys have been here before, then you will know that red is my favorite color. And so I just really wanted to use red top stitching on this particular garment. And this time around, I do feel like my top stitching was pretty darn good. And I really like the way that the red looks popping against the black. Now I did not make a muslin for these because the pattern is just so involved that I didn't think I would have the energy to make a muslin first and then still wanna make the actual garment, so I just went for it. And so because of that, I do have a couple of fit issues that I would like to fix next time. I think overall the fit is pretty good and I'm really quite happy with it, but there are a few things that aren't quite right. And so I think I'm pretty sure that the front crotch is a little bit too long and I think that I might also need to scoop it a little bit because I do get this kind of poochy bubble in the front and it's not bad. It's not gonna prevent me from wearing them, but I think next time around, I would really like to just fix that. So I think maybe if I just shortened the front crotch just a little bit and also scooped it, that that would take care of that issue. I also have a little bit of wrinkling on the back legs, which is something that happens to me quite a lot. However, when I have tried to fix that issue in the past, I often have ended up causing other problems. I usually try to like just pinch a little bit out of the back leg length to make it a little bit shorter, but that solution has often not worked out that well for me. So I don't know if I would bother next time worrying about the back of the legs. I think that they're perfectly reasonably fine and you need to be able to sit and move around and stuff in your overalls. So I don't think that I would worry so much about the back legs, but I do think I would try to fix that front crotch. So I do really like how the length came out on this particular pair of overalls. I think that it's really versatile, so I can leave them unrolled and they're perfect for the winter time. But in the summer, if I want them to be a little bit more cropped, I can just do a quick double cuff and then my ankles show. So I really am happy with that length. I like the straight leg. I think that if I were to make this again, the next version would probably be the shorts version because I think that I would get a ton of wear out of that in the spring and summer. But I will tell you right now that I am not gonna be making another one of these for a while just because it was so involved. Totally worth it, but really a lot of work. So I would absolutely recommend this pattern if you are looking for a genuine real pair of overalls. I have a few other similar patterns in my stash, but I think that if I wanna make something like this again, I'll just go back to this one because I've already put in a fair amount of work on it and it would be simple to just keep going with the same pattern from here on out. So now that we've gotten through all the details of my winter sewing module, be sure to keep watching so you can see the slideshow of how all the pieces coordinate together. So if you've been waiting to see that, I'm gonna send you there right now.